I want to start off by telling you a story from Greek mythology. And this is the story of Ulysses. Ulysses is a legendary hero in Greek mythology. He was the protagonist of two of Homer's most famous works, the Iliad and the Odyssey. And in particular, I want to focus on the Odyssey, which is the story of Ulysses returning home after the Trojan War. It was a voyage that took 10 years. They were on a boat. And perhaps the most interesting part of the story of, of Odysseus is the story of Ulysses and the Sirens. Who were the Sirens? The, the Sirens were these beautiful mythical creatures that lived on rocky shores. What they did was they sang beautifully and sweetly. And every sailor that walked past or sailed past heard their singing, tried to find out who these Sirens were, and ended up shipwrecking the boats because the rocks were dangerous. Now, of course, Ulysses had heard about this. And what he wanted to do was he wanted to make sure that he would not be a target of these kinds of shipwrecks. So what did he do? He did two things. As you can see in this picture, he instructed his crew to tie him to the mast. Further, he had wax poured into the ears of his crew. Now, what did this do? The crew could not hear the singing. Ulysses could hear the singing, but he couldn't do anything about it. And as a result, the crew was able to continue rowing, and Ulysses was able to continue steering. This story of Ulysses and the sirens is a perfect metaphor for the notion of self-control. Let me illustrate the notion of self-control with a very, very simple demonstration, an example that's been repeated again and again in a lot of research in behavioral economics. Let's imagine I give you a choice between $10 today or $12 in a week. Which one would you choose? You'd be surprised that a lot of folks who answer this question choose $10 today. And as an economist, that's OK, because it simply reflects a large discount rate that you place on the future. Here's the more interesting part. Suppose I add an extra year to both options. And now the question is, would you rather take $10 in 52 weeks or $12 in 53 weeks? I mean, you ask that question, Everybody is willing to wait one week for the extra two bucks. So in some, here's what's happening. When people are making a choice between waiting an extra week for an extra $2, they will make it if both choices are in the future, but not if both are in the present. That notion is captured in this graph. And what you're going to see in this graph is SS and LL. SS stands for the shorter, sooner reward, the $10. LL stands for the larger, later reward, the $12. And the two lines that you see coming from SS and LL, they're marked as VTSS and VTLL, represent the present value of the future outcome. So for example, SS and LL are happening in the future. I'm standing here, and I'm looking at them. And the two lines represent how I value SS and LL at different points in time. What you see is, if I'm looking at the future today, I can see that SS is shorter than LL. I'm going to choose LL. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait for the larger, later reward. But as I keep getting closer and closer, I get to a point that's called the indifference point, and an area of time that's marked on that plot as the lapse zone. And what happens in the lapse zone is suddenly SS starts looking larger than LL. If you think about the world of visual perception, this is something that we call the phenomena of parallax. You could think about SS and LL as two buildings. And when you look at those two buildings from a distance, you can tell which one is shorter than the other one. But as soon as you start getting really close to the shorter one and look up at the skies, it seems to crowd out the larger building. So there's a fundamentally simple psychological process that is explaining how people perceive visual distances versus how they visual temporal distances. Now, the notion that these two lines coming out of SS and LL cross each other is a phenomena that is called by economists or behavioral economists as hyperbolic discounting. Discounting is the idea that people value things differently in the present as opposed to the future. Hyperbolic refers to the specific equation, the specific functional form, which lets those two lines cross each other. If you think about it, SS and LL are metaphors for all kinds of things in life. SS could be getting 
the tasty chocolate cake now, LL could be having a healthier life in the future. SS could be working, you know, uh, working hard uh, at, at a given point in time and then goofing off. LL could be keeping working hard and making sure you have a secure future. And so at many points in time, when we look at options that are in the future, we can see that LL is better than SS. But as soon as we get closer to SS, the tempting option, we choose it. Why does that happen? Why do we fall into lapse zones? Well, there are three reasons. One is physical proximity. When you get really close to SS, you almost feel like you have it. And not having it feels like a loss. And we've learned from the research of Danny Kahneman and others that losses hurt you much more than gains make you feel happy. Or you could have physical features of the stimuli that arouse the body senses. I had a doctoral student, Shuping Lee. What she did was she had students come into a lab that smelled of chocolate cookies or popcorn. And what she found was the moment she had students come in a room that smelled of chocolate cookies, they made much more impulsive choices in domains that had nothing to do with either chocolate or cookies. So there was a general arousal that was going on that made people impulsive. It could be visualization. We've all seen uh, examples of lottery advertising, which tell us, imagine you've won a million dollars. And the moment you imagine, you feel like you almost have it, and you are tempted by that option. Or you could think about framing. The same option can be framed as, you've got a good thing coming a week from now. How much do you want to pay to speed it up? Versus, I can give you something today. How much of a premium would you accept to delay that same thing. And it turns out that delaying is much more difficult than speeding up. So as a result of these three factors, we end up with the notion of intertemporal choice, with the notion that while people know from a distance that LL is bigger than SS, they end up choosing SS as they get close to it.